Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to talk about autopilot. Now there's a lot of videos already out there that cover autopilot and how you can test it out and get started with it, but not a lot of them cover how it actually works in the real world. Also the videos that do exist have been around for quite a while, autopilot came out a few years ago now and they really showcased how to do stuff back then and I want to cover how to do it now and also how to do it in the most efficient way possible. So the testing bit, you know, it's really important for you to be able to test autopilot. But let's not do it the old way, let's not do it the slow way, let's do it as as I would and, and get it the most efficient way as possible. So let's jump straight into my uh, my endpoint manager admin center and take a look at where we set up autopilot. So we start in the admin center, endpoint.microsoft.com, and then in devices we can go to enroll devices and then Windows enrollment. So these are the uh, these are the main points that we need to look at uh, Windows, Windows Autopilot deployment program and then some deployment profiles. Bear in mind there there are some prerequisites that I'll put in the description around things like custom branding in your um, in your in your Azure portal. But there are so many videos out there on how to do that. I don't want to cover that in this video. This is really just about getting started with Autopilot. So in deployment profiles. You can see I've got a, a deployment profile already called cloud only. But let's create one from scratch and call this autopilot demo. So this button here about uh, converting all target devices to autopilot isn't relevant right now because what I want to show you is adding devices into the portal and then building them. So we don't need to, to worry about that. But in the use case where you have existing devices that do that are already you know, either domain joined or um, Azure AD joined, then you could uh, put them in a group and target this autopilot deployment profile at those devices. And then they would automatically be put into your autopilot list so that you can build them without needing to capture the, the hardware information or without needing your OEM to go in there and, and put the information in there for you. I, I will cover that in a separate video, uh, along with hybrid autopilot in the future. But Let's just go through this very simple demo first. So we'll use leave, leave that as no for now and just click next. And we're going to be doing user driven as opposed to self deploying, mainly because I can't do self deploying in my VM environment, but also because user driven is the most frequent way you'll be doing Windows Autopilot. We will be doing Azure AD joined in this video, but in a future video, I'll be doing a hybrid Azure AD join to show how that works. So skipping through this, I'll be hiding uh, license terms, hiding the privacy settings, and in the newer versions, we're able to um, hide account types, and also we're going to allow this user to only be a standard user when they've when this they've finished enrolling this device. I'm going to choose not to do white glove out of box experience, and I will cover in the future video what white glove is. Uh, I'm going to automatically configure a keyboard and I'm not going to apply a device name template for this video. But if you were, then you can simply choose a prefix and then a random set of characters afterwards. So I'll choose no and choose next. So for the deployment, I need to create a group of devices and I'm going to leave this as blank for now and just not deploy this and we'll create that group once I've got my devices into the autopilot uh, devices list. So next, and these are the settings, nice and simple. So we'll click create. Okay, so we have an autopilot demo and that is not assigned. So heading back to the devices uh, section here, we can go to enroll devices and then take a look at devices. So you can see I've got one device in my list already and it's got a profile assigned. So that must be the other cloud only profile that I was using. But what you will notice is that it's blank. Uh, almost almost no devices in here at all and really in an enterprise you'd want to have all of your devices in this list. So how do we get devices in this list? Well we need to import them using a CSV theoretically that was the old way. Um, there are uh, new ways to do some testing which I'll go through in a few minutes in the demonstration but so the three ways to get devices into this list are to import it yourself using the CSV or the script that I'll show you in a few minutes. There's also to allow a CSP licensing partner to to put these in your tenant for you. 
uh, when they sell you a device or when or when they um, when they provide a device for you. Or there's the the OEM, so Dell, HP, Lenovo, all those big partners will happily put these devices into your autopilot uh, area for you, into your autopilot device at least for you as part of their service. So what does it look like when an OEM has put all of this information into your list for you? Well, I'll show you, I'll show you another tenant I've got where we actually have live devices being placed into the, into the autopilot device list by a partner. So I'll show you that. And here we are. So in this list, you can see there's a couple of virtual machines we used for testing. And then we've got some HP devices. Uh, and this list has filled up quite nicely as we've been using autopilot over the years. So yeah, these devices are automatically building whenever we ship them to the end user, they, they build and, and do the autopilot thing. So the aim eventually when you're working with a partner and when you're doing this in production is to have something around about this, around about how this looks. And you can see we've got uh, some information on the right hand side about the device itself, the fact that it's got the, the profile that was assigned, when it was assigned, the associated device and in Intune, the associated Azure AD device, and then the last contact. You can add also purchase order information and tags and stuff when when, there's, when those OEMs create this information in the portal for you. Okay, so over to my other tenant, and we're going to add some devices into this list as part of this demonstration. So I'm going to grab a virtual machine and do some autopilot registration for this virtual machine. Okay, so here we are with a virtual machine. Now, in previous videos that I've seen on on YouTube and and various demonstrations I've seen, the the way we add devices or collect hardware information from this device to add into the autopilot device list is incredibly slow. Some trainers go through creating, go through the out-of-box experience by clicking yes, 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 and then going through all the questions and eventually getting through to the bit where you can get into an interactive desktop and run the script. Other trainers will press Control shift f3 and get into the sysprep window where you can uh, essentially get to the interactive desktop and do whatever you need to there, run the script, collect the information, all that kind of stuff. But there is a quicker way. So let's see if this works on this virtual machine. We're going to do shift. And on my keyboard, I need to press function, but uh, theoretically it's just shift and then F10. So this sh should launch a command prompt. And from here, we can run the script that we need to run. So this very quickly gets us to the stage where we can run a script. And in previous videos, I've seen uh, trainers go through a very elongated process to get to a command prompt where they can run a script. Okay, so let's get started then. So we're going to open PowerShell. It doesn't have to be in capitals, but I did accidentally tap caps lock when I was uh, doing the, the key combination there. So PowerShell in lowercase will work just fine. So we want to um, set the execution policy to bypass or unrestricted or whatever you whatever you want to do to get this um, script to be able to run. And then we also want to install script get dash windows autopilot info. And this will go off to uh, PowerShell gallery and grab the script that we need to run. So it's asking for the path environment variable to be changed. So I'm pressing yes on that. And then we'll wait for it to download this script and ask a few more questions. So it's, it's asking if we can use NuGet. So I'll say yes to that. So they can grab this package from the internet. And it's, it's an untrusted repository for this environment. So I'm going to choose yes, because we need to get this script running. And it's definitely the right script name that I typed. So I'm fairly comfortable that uh, this is, is ready to go. So it just downloads and installs that. And then we'll get the, the prompt again where we can type the type the script name. Okay, so from here, we could run get Windows Autopilot info and then use output file and put a uh, autopilot info file on the C drive. And then we need to find a way to grab that from the C drive and put that into Intune. In this case, I'm going to use a different command switch, which is online. And this is going to go away and install the required prerequisites to do the next bit of, of what we're expecting it to do, which is allow us to, to log in to our tenant and essentially push this autopilot device information directly to the Intune portal.
Okay, so here we are, just asking me to sign into my account. So I'm going to log in as my global admin. And I'll be prompted for multi factor authentication. So I'll just approve that on my phone. And you can see at the bottom there it's connected to the Intune tenant, gathered the details for this device, and it's waiting for one of one device to be imported. So that's really good. Let's give this a few seconds and we'll see how it goes. Okay, that took about two or three minutes. Uh, and nah, I said two or three minutes, it felt like longer. It was 94 seconds, I apologize. So uh, it's currently imported the device and um, all done. So the, the process for now is to close this window and give this device a reboot. So I'm gonna to choose to shut down because so I'm gonna restart it in a few minutes. Okay, so heading over to the portal. If we do a sync on our autopilot devices list and maybe a refresh, we should see this additional device having been added. Awesome. Okay, so we've got this new device that's been added that hasn't got an assignment. So remember, we didn't uh, assign a profile. So this profile is not going to get assigned by itself. We haven't told it which profile we want to to assign to this device. So I'm going to need to firstly create a group that this device will live within. And then I will deploy this autopilot profile, the autopilot demo profile that we just created to this device. So let's create a group. Now with the group, I want it to be an automatic group that picks up all autopilot devices and automatically deploys the profile to them. Because that's firstly the way, the way you should do it in production, but also it's a really good test. So let's go to new group. And I'm going to call it all autopilot devices. Now this obviously needs to be a dynamic group. So we're going to change the membership type to dynamic device and we need to create a query. So I'm just going to type this in because it's easy to type in. I want to just give it a, a quick um, rule that I want to use. So it's device dot device. Let's speed this up while, um, while I type. So this this um, physical ID, the zero touch deployment ID, is a unique thing that gets created with all autopilot devices that get get added to the deployment to the autopilot devices list. So that quickly identifies all devices that are added into the autopilot device list. If you wanted to, you could use you could look for a group tag or you could look for a purchase order number. But for me, I just really want to use uh, all devices in that list and apply my one profile. So I'll save this and then create the group. So at the top here, we have this group that I've already created. We'll give it a few moments while it processes these devices and, and picks up the computer that should be in the list. Okay, so we can see we've got the, the built machine that I already added into my portal in the past. And then we've also got this uh, virtual machine that I've just created. So that's good. Now we have somewhere to target our autopilot profile. So back into the autopilot profile and choose it. I'm going to change the properties and go to assignments and then deploy it. Okay, so now we've done that. A little bit more waiting. We need to wait for this to assign to the device because remember this, this all needs to go into Azure all needs to go into the back end so that Microsoft will tell this device what to do when you turn it on. The way we can see how it's going is to go into the Enroll Devices section and then Devices and just wait for this not assigned status to, choose, to change to Assigning and eventually it will get to Assigned. Okay, I just kicked off Sync. The Sync normally happens every, every once in a while anyway, maybe a few hours or so, and then uh, it will update this. And the idea is that in testing, you, you're quite impatient, you, you want it to synchronize much quicker. But in reality, these devices are going to get added to your portal by the OEM and then shipped to you. So the only thing that needs to happen is that the sync schedule is quicker than the shipping time of the device, which is almost certainly true. So the devices are always going to be there. If they're imported at the time of shipping, 
then they're definitely going to be in the portal and synchronized with the profile assigned by the time they get to your end user. As you can see, mine says profile status updating. So we'll give that a few more minutes and see how this goes. Okay, that probably took a few minutes. It's now saying the profile is assigned. So now we can jump into the virtual machine, switch back on and see how this works. Okay, so this machine is just gonna load up. It'll get to the out of box experience screen and then hopefully pick up some information from the autopilot service. And there we go. So we have a, a nice welcome message which says welcome to get modern, enter your get modern email. So we could sign in with our lucy.tester uh, account and get signed in. But I wanted to show you what happens if you assign the device to a particular user, just to show it. So what I'm going to do is just turn this machine off and then go back to the portal. So here we have our autopilot device. This one here is the one that's assigned. I'm going to choose it. And then firstly, I want to also give it a device name. So this is autopilot demo one, one. I'll save that. And then I want to assign this device to Lucy so that when Lucy receives this device, she is greeted in a, in a more personal way. Let's do that. So I click on the device itself, tick that check mark, and then choose assign user, and then find Lucy in the list. There she is. And choose select. And you can see we've got our user friendly name there. I'm going to actually just call her Lucy because we, you know, we're quite an informal team here. So I'm going to call her Lucy. It doesn't change the UPN that gets assigned, but it just greets her with a with a, with a first name rather than the full name, which is quite good. And then we'll choose save. Okay, great. So let's see what happens when we start this off. So back over to the virtual machine, just started it. Let's see what happens when we load it up. Okay, so we're back to the welcome to get modern, but as you can see, we've got, hi Lucy. So that's, you know, better for a start. It's much more personal to the user because we knew who we were sending the device to. But also notice it doesn't ask her to type in her username or her email address or UPN or whatever. It just asks for the password. So now we can get started much quicker without needing to tell users that they should enter their email address. They can just get cracking. So let's go ahead and tap in Lucy's email address. Uh, sorry, just tap in Lucy's password uh, and it's asking us to set up additional information uh, about Lucy so that we can be verified through additional uh, factors. choose setup now, it will probably ask us to configure multi-factor authentication by getting the app. So I've already got the app, so I'll grab that now. Okay, so that was really simple to do. Full information on the screen of how to how to get started with that uh, and, you know, up and running in a few seconds with that additional second factor of, of uh, verification. Okay, so what this is going to do now, which is going to go away sign Lucy in and get her set up with all of the stuff that we've deployed via Autopilot. In this case, we've not deployed anything via Autopilot yet or anything via Intune to these devices, so nothing is going to happen. So I'm going to skip past this bit rather than wasting your time and letting you see a device sign in. You've seen the device sign in before, so we'll skip over that. But that really is as simple as it, as it can get. So in the next video, I'm going to try and show you how to do the, all of this with hybrid Autopilot and join on-premise AD, in case you still need to do that. And also we're going to look at converting existing devices to autopilot to get your existing devices that are in Azure AD or uh, hybrid AD to become autopilot devices and deploy using these profiles. But that's it for this video. So if you've liked this, please hit the like button and let me know if you've got a question or a comment or want me to cover anything else related to this, please let me know in the comments. Bye for now.